With three words, Elon Musk shook the industry to its foundations. No more lithium. In a scenario where the entire automotive sector is still struggling to figure out how to deal with lithium shortages and skyrocketing prices, Tesla simply changed the rules of the game. The answer came like a silent thunderclap, the aluminum ion battery, which not only bypasses lithium, but completely redefines what we understand by energy in electric vehicles. And we're not talking about something distant. The Model 2, scheduled for 2026, will be the first Tesla car to embrace this energy revolution. The most shocking detail? The battery's price. Just $1,795 in a market where a 60 kilowatt battery still costs around $9,000 to $12,000. That price seems like a joke. But Musk wasn't laughing. He knew exactly what he was doing. The proposal was simple, yet bold. Make electric cars so cheap and durable that any argument against them would fall flat. And this isn't just about price. It's about range. It's about forgetting the fear of running out of charge. It's about trusting that your car will go much further, charge faster, cost less, and last more than two decades without losing power. Even Tesla's most optimistic fans weren't prepared for this announcement. The idea that lithium, considered the white gold of recent years, was no longer essential sounded almost heretical. But Musk has always bet against the consensus. And this time, his chips were all on the table. Tesla, with its partnerships with top universities and control over every link in the production chain, achieved the seemingly impossible gracefully ending dependence on an expensive, geographically limited, and environmentally questionable resource. And the icing on the cake? This battery, besides being cheaper, promises a range of up to 600 miles. That's right, almost a thousand kilometers on a single charge. We're no longer discussing small, incremental improvements. We're talking about a quantum leap, a paradigm shift. Imagine crossing entire states without needing to stop to recharge, or simply forgetting that range was ever a concern. Tesla doesn't just want to compete. It wants every other manufacturer to look like they're playing a different game. This move didn't come out of nowhere. Musk had already been signaling. In stray statements, he mentioned lithium's limits. The global extraction and refining infrastructure is at its limit. Costs have risen 900% since 2020, and the environmental impact of open-pit mining has become a political issue in several countries. Unlike lithium, aluminum is a longtime industry favorite, found in abundance in the Earth's crust, cheap, recyclable, and infinitely easier to process. The change, of course, was logical. The hard part was making it viable at scale. Many predicted it would take Tesla years to solve the technical challenges of aluminum ion. After all, this technology has always been promising but unstable. Energy density, thermal safety, and the number of cycles were real barriers. But Musk did what no one expected. He worked it all out behind the scenes, quietly, until he was ready to present a functional and extremely competitive product. And now that it's about to hit the streets in 2026, competitors have been caught off guard. Tesla broke the lab's silence, and suddenly, all the talk about costs began to sound different. The venture, called Aerocell Fusion, isn't just a pretty name. It's the glue that unites academic research and industrial-scale production. The partnership with the University of Texas brought know-how that transforms raw aluminum into cells that behave, and behave well, under real-world conditions. The initial advantage is obvious. Aluminum is cheap and abundant, and this raw advantage already changes the math on cost per kW. But the real genius lies in the production chain. The dry electrode process, a legacy of the Maxwell acquisition, eliminates expensive and polluting manufacturing steps. This means lower energy consumption on the lines, less need for solvents, and a more compact factory layout. When space and energy are reduced, numbers that were once dreams become frighteningly close to reality. And Tesla isn't just talking in theory. Prototypes and pilot lines are already showing concrete gains in cost and speed. 
The conversation now is no longer about if it will be cheap, but rather how quickly this economy will hit the market. The numbers circulating internally are a warning sign in themselves. Cutting 70% of energy consumption in production means permanently reducing operating costs. The dry electrode not only saves energy, but also facilitates recycling and reduces chemical waste. These factory savings add to Tesla's bargaining power, which buys raw materials in bulk and reduces the impact of price fluctuations. Vertical integration, which was previously only a strategic advantage, now becomes a necessary condition for enabling packs at 1,295. By controlling mining, processing, and assembly, Tesla bypasses intermediaries who have historically eaten into margins. It's a cultural shift in the industry, no longer blindly trusting suppliers, but internalizing critical competencies. And this allows for predictability, a rarity in the battery market. When you look at costs, you can't ignore the multiplier effect of all this combined. And honestly, it's easy to understand why competitors are nervous. Integration involves logistics and factory design. Gigafactories designed for 4,680 cells adapt to new chemistries with less re-engineering than previously thought. Tesla leverages molds, assembly lines, and aluminum casting know-how to create synergies between the body and cell. This synergy reduces internal transportation, avoids redundant processes, and accelerates pack assembly. Furthermore, the ability to convert existing lines into local microfactories reduces overall logistics costs. Producing close to the point of sale becomes not only viable, but also economically desirable. The practical result is simple. Less time between raw material and finished battery, lower inventory costs, and greater agility to adjust production to demand. Companies that rely on long contracts and complex supply chains will have difficulty competing with this fluidity. And this explains part of Tesla's confidence in its announced price. The issue of raw materials is another key piece in this cost equation. Aluminum, unlike lithium, is not concentrated in a few unstable geopolitical regions. This reduces sovereign risk and trade barriers that tend to inflate prices. The difference in price per ton radically transforms the cost of the pack when multiplied by millions of tons processed. Furthermore, Aluminum has a robust recycling chain, which opens up space for circular strategies that recapture value and reduce dependence on primary sources. For a scale producer, competing for aluminum is very different from competing for lithium, and this availability generates predictability for long-term investments. Investors see less risk and greater margin predictability. With lower volatility in the raw material, Tesla can plan more aggressive pricing without fear of surprises. Some still point to a specter. What about research and development? Tesla anticipates this concern by amortizing R&D at scale. When innovation is applied to millions of units, the R&D cost per unit plummets. The $500 estimate assigned to the final cost in the initial communication already includes amortization of tools, prototypes, and optimizations. This isn't magic, it's scale accounting. The faster Tesla converts prototypes into continuous production, the faster the scale effect reduces the effective price per pack. Paradoxically, the same investments that scare rivals become Tesla's competitive advantage. The philosophy is clear. Tolerate heavy investment upfront to control marginal costs later. And anyone familiar with the company's history knows how this script usually ends. Efficiency comes not only from the process, but also from the creativity of implementation. Modular microfactories, for example, are a concept that has exploded internally as a solution for remote markets. Instead of relying solely on large plants, Tesla is testing small local production hubs that reduce parts transit and delivery times. This cuts logistics, reduces tariffs, and allows for regional customization. The adaptability of the production process to smaller production lines is a technical advantage that few players master. Furthermore, the combination of automation and design for manufacturing 
facilitates the replication of these microfactories in multiple countries. The effect is twofold, lower costs and greater supply chain resilience. And for a product that aims for low price and high availability, this makes all the difference. Production efficiency only makes sense if there's scale. And here, Tesla is in a different league. While many automakers still struggle with supply issues and dependence on third parties, Tesla already operates a veritable empire of synchronized factories. Fremont, Berlin, Shanghai, Austin, and now the Gigafactory in Mexico. Each of these is not just a factory. It's part of an ecosystem that breathes technology, optimization, and ambition. And all are being adjusted to incorporate almost organically the new aluminum ion chemistry. This means Tesla isn't building everything from scratch. It's just changing gears in an already running engine. The 4680 cells, once the company's star, are now the foundation for the new revolution. This is because the lines that already produce these cells on a large scale were designed to be flexible. This flexibility in the manufacturing world is gold. Adapting to aluminum ion requires adjustments, of course, but nothing that interrupts the production pace. On the contrary, process improvements could even accelerate the pace even further. Tesla doesn't just want to manufacture thousands of packs per month. It wants to manufacture millions per year with predictable costs, controlled quality, and fast delivery. And all this within a closed loop where manufacturing, transportation, and distribution align with surgical precision. There are increasingly strong rumors that prototype aluminum ion cells are already being produced daily, somewhere between 100 and 200 units in some facilities. These aren't numbers to feed an assembly line, of course, but they're precisely the numbers that indicate the stage Tesla is at. Large-scale testing, with data being generated in real time, and these aren't just isolated cells. These prototypes are being inserted into test vehicles, which drive daily under severe conditions. Tesla is literally putting its batteries through their paces, and that's exactly how it knows whether something is ready for the real world. These tests don't take place in just any facility. The KO factory in California has become a true center of excellence for battery research and development. There, Tesla not only produces prototypes, but also tests thermal resistance, energy density, response to fast charging, and long-term stability. The idea is simple. If an aluminum ion cell can survive everything Tesla throws at it, it will survive everyday use by any consumer. And based on the leaked data, things are going well. Okay, to be honest. But testing doesn't stop in California. Giga Nevada has stepped in as a validation site for real-world road conditions. Prototypes are installed in test vehicles that face urban routes, highways, heavy traffic, and rough terrain. The goal is to verify the battery's behavior outside the laboratory. With all the variables a car faces in daily use, heat, cold, sudden acceleration, intense braking, if the cell survives these unscathed, it's ready for the consumer. And that's where Tesla excels. It doesn't wait for the product to be 100% perfect, in theory. It puts the product on the battlefield and improves based on reality. What's most interesting is how all this connects to the numbers presented. Because there's no point in announcing a $1,795 battery if it's not viable at scale. And Tesla knows this. Each stage of testing, each cell that survives stress, each pack that delivers stable performance, brings the company closer to mass production. The idea is clear. By the end of 2025, pre-production Model 2s will be running with initial versions of the battery. In 2026, production begins with limited batches. And starting in 2027, the rollout will be global. While many are still stuck in lithium's past, Tesla is advancing with figures that border on the unbelievable. One of the most talked about data points within the industry is the performance of the new aluminum ion batteries in charge cycles. According to sources linked to the University of Queensland, 
a key partner in this advancement, laboratory tests revealed something extraordinary. 99% capacity retention even after 10,000 charge cycles. To give you an idea, most lithium-ion batteries begin to show noticeable degradation after 1,000 to 2,000 cycles. Here, we're talking about a lifespan 5 to 10 times greater. This completely changes the concept of longevity in electric vehicles. While drivers previously had to think about replacing the battery after a decade, they can now comfortably drive for 20 or 30 years with the same pack. This shift is so profound that it's even disrupting current business models. Leasing, resale, extended warranties, all of this needs to be rewritten when the battery outlasts the car itself. And the most interesting thing is that Tesla didn't get to this point by luck. It took years of research, testing in extreme environments and, above all, clever chemical modifications. One of the biggest advantages was the use of fluoroethylene carbonate, an additive that stabilizes the electrodes and prevents deterioration caused by moisture. This has always been one of the Achilles heels of aluminum ion technology. In theory, it was promising. In practice, it disintegrated over time. But by introducing this compound, Tesla solved the problem with disconcerting simplicity. This moisture resistance, combined with a solid electrolyte structure, allows the cell to operate without significant losses even in humid environments or with wide temperature variations. In other words, the car can go from the Arctic to the desert without losing efficiency. And it's not just the durability that's impressive. The energy density of the new cells already rivals the most modern batteries on the market. Sources point to somewhere between 150 and 200 dotty depending on the application and cell profile. This is enough to provide high range without increasing the vehicle's overall weight, essential in an affordable car like the Model 2. The balance between capacity, weight, and cost is one of the most difficult points to achieve in any EV platform, and it seems Tesla has found the right formula with aluminum ion. This allows not only an enviable range, but also rapid acceleration, better mass distribution, and superior overall energy efficiency. Tesla, however, doesn't intend to release this technology to all models immediately. The plan is well calculated. The Model 2 will receive the first versions of the aluminum ion battery in limited trims, with a global rollout scheduled for 2027. This extra time allows for fine-tuning of the manufacturing process, quality control, and even software optimizations for better integration with the energy management system. The goal is simple, to ensure that every unit released is 100% ready to deliver maximum performance with plenty of reliability. If aluminum ion already seemed like the stuff of science fiction, Tesla's next step goes beyond cars and into the realm of the energy revolution. That's because the company isn't just developing a better battery. It's shaping a new, decentralized energy infrastructure. And it all starts with a simple observation. Aluminum is absurdly abundant. With 70 million tons produced worldwide each year, 